Hi, kids. Hi, hi. I'm so happy that you guys are here at the Wave Online with me. It's so exciting to be learning about God together. But before we get started with today's Bible story, let's all stand up so we can sing some songs and worship God together. Let's go. Before the day I took a breath, you had a plan for my every step. This isn't gonna work. I'm gonna do really bad today. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna forget what I have to say. <sighs> I might as well just give up. Hi, I miss you, London. I'm gonna fail, friends. Sorry, but I'm just trying to be honest. I'm trying to have integrity. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. And our memory verse for this month, it explains it so well. Can you say it with me? Okay, here we go. We find it in Proverbs 10, 9. Anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. So let's learn this with some hand motions. So this is anyone who lives without blame, walk safely. Hey friends, hey friends. But anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. You ready? Anyone who lives without blame, walk safely. Hey friends. But anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. Proverbs 10, 9. The truth is, that speech that I have to give today is gonna go badly, my friends. I'm supposed to talk to a bunch of strangers about different kinds of masks, but every time I give a speech, I get so nervous that everything I want to say just comes out all wrong. I don't know if this happens to you, but I keep hearing these voices in my head. 
You're not very good at talking to people. When you tell jokes, they're stinky. Other people are way better than you. The more I listen to these voices, the more I believe them. So it's probably better if I just don't even do the speech today. Can't mess it up if I don't try, right? Well, you won't be embarrassed. Good point, teddy bear voice. So, in today's story, we're learning about how to control what we think. Hmm, like that would be helpful. Wait, would that be helpful? Let's watch. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Philippians, chapter four, verse eight. Horatio liked to keep track of things in his head. Five kinds of cereal in the cabinet. 17 braids on his sister Nala's head. Two voicemail messages left on his parents' landline phone. Oh, seriously, Mom? You are so stuck in the 1990s. Horatio was especially good at keeping track of things that went wrong. Number one, we're out of chocolate frosted sugar bomb cereal. Horatio's mother did not always appreciate his lists. I did not buy that. Your dad bought that. Number two, it is freezing in here. Put on a sweater. Number three, Miss Watson is making us do a group project and they are the worst because everyone else drags me down. Horatio, can you please focus on something positive for once? Just keeping it real. Oh, oh, I know about positive stuff. Miss Christie told us. Horatio's little sister, Nala, began rummaging around in the stacks of random paper on the counter. There is nothing positive about this morning, and I'm positive about that. Nala pulled out a scribbled on handout and waved it triumphantly. Philippians 4, 8? Do not read me a coloring sheet. Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Mom, make her stop bugging me. No, this is good. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. Horatio just glared and checked out the lunch that Mom had packed. Is this strawberry jam in my sandwich? You know I only eat apricot jam. Over the next two hours, Horatio counted dozens of annoying things. <coughs> Number one, this bus stinks like dirty socks stuffed with Cheetos. Number two, the classroom door needs some WD-40. Number three, Miss Watson is wearing yellow, and I hate yellow. Number four, this pencil is making a giant callus on my finger. Number five, group projects are still the worst. Number six, it's way too hot over here. And to make matters worse, Miss Watson had put Tish James in charge of the group. Ugh. So, we get to do a report on Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. I'll write the history and Jordan, you can paint a picture, and Horatio, you research stuff about the land and animals around it. Number seven, Tish is super bossy. Oh, and here's a picture of the lighthouse. Tish held up a glossy photograph and Horatio opened his mouth, ready to complain about how boring lighthouses were, but he couldn't do it. Hatteras Lighthouse, spiraling into the sunset sky, was breathtaking. He could picture walking the beach and waves crashing as the warm light glowed overhead. Ah. And Horatio couldn't help hearing an echo of his little sister's voice. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. <laughs> there it was, right in front of his face. Horatio found brand new thoughts forming in his brain. Hey, that looks really cool. That's amazing. 
It was as if a switch had flipped in Horatio's head. After seeing one good thing, he started to see more. Jordan had brought in some paintings he had done. Number one, Jordan, you are a really great artist. Ms. Watson helped Horatio solve some tough fractions by drawing a funny sketch. Number two, Ms. Watson is a super creative teacher. Mom had packed homemade cookies and Horatio's lunch. Number three, my mom makes the best chocolate chip cookies on the planet. Who wants to share? By the time Horatio got off the school bus. Number four, Mr. Rob drove us right up to our house because of the rain. He was actually smiling. Mom met them at the door. Hey kids, how was school? At that moment, Nala shook out her wet umbrella all over Horatio. And for a moment, Horatio frowned. Nala braced herself. Uh, sorry. Number five, I have a closet full of dry clothes upstairs. Nala's eyebrows shot way up. What happened to you? Nothing. I just realized I've got some pretty great things to focus on. So your day went okay? Number six, it was positively awesome. Horatio beamed and ran upstairs to change his wet shirt. He had a lot of brand new lists to make up in his head. The Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians 4.8, Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. Do you know what that means? It means that you're in charge of what you think about. Maybe you can't control every single thing that enters your brain. Think about fish. But you can control the thoughts that you focus on. <laughs> yes, you can. Having integrity doesn't just mean that you're honest with other people, it means that you're honest with yourself too. And to do that, you need to try to focus on things that are true. Things like, God made you. God forgives you. God loves you. God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on a cross for you. And he's big enough to bring Jesus back from the dead so he's way bigger than all the things that you and I worry about. So the one thing to remember for today is this, focus on what is true. And if you ever feel like you can't control your thoughts or the voices in your head seem so loud, talk to someone you trust about it. Find someone who will help you stay focused on the truth of God's amazing love for you. You know what? I'm gonna choose not to believe those voices that are telling me that I'm not any good. God made me and I am good. And then I'm gonna try to give the best speech that I can. Bet you didn't see that one coming. No! I mean, nope. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think so. Everything changes when you put your focus on what's good in our lives. It makes everything better when we think about what God is doing, even when things are difficult and when we don't understand. Why don't we talk to God right now and ask him to help us with that? Dear God, we want to be truthful in every part of our lives, including our thoughts. We know that we can easily put our focus on the things that don't go our way. And when that happens, we can end up frustrated, angry, or even scared. In those moments, God, please help us focus on what's true. Help us focus on you and see all the ways you're working in our lives. Help us trust that you're always with us and that your plans for us are always good. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, friends. I love you and I will see you next weekend. Bye. Here's everything we've got going on at Twin Lakes Kids. Check it out. Send us your best jokes to be featured on Silly Saturday. Go to tlc.org slash kids to submit. We would love to see you at Twin Lakes Kids Camp.
This camp runs monthly every Monday and Thursday from 4 to 6. The purpose of this ministry is to assist families who are distance learning this fall. To sign up, go to tlc.org slash kids. Find us on Facebook and Instagram where we post new things every day. Devos, worship songs, this or that Thursday, and silly Saturday. Check it out at Twin Lakes Kids. Do you have a prayer request? We are praying for our Twin Lakes Kids families. If there are any specific prayer requests you have, head to tlc.org kids to send us yours.